This video is going to be about using effects in AI both on the layer and specific to the clips and how we control and use them. Okay, so as I mentioned there are two ways of applying effects. If we apply the effects on the layer, any video we play on that layer will also make use of that effect. But there are certain times when you want an effect only on one clip or you want a specific iteration of that effect on that clip. And in that case, we would apply it directly to the clip itself. So let's look at how we do those couple of ways. So let's look at the layer first. So if I just double left click on my layer to open my layer properties, let's bring that down a little bit. And we'll just bring that one up. Okay, cool. So we've got two effects engines per layer. Um, now the effects format we take is SVFX, it's our own format, Salvation FX. It basically allows you to use um, shader code, to use free frame GL, to use modules, Java code, really, really anything that you want at all to use in there. Anything that works in Salvation should work within the effects system. Um, there are some templates for the effects as well. If you check out um, Distrib Modules FX, SVFX and just down the bottom there's a couple of templates. Um, you'll notice that the effects all start with a number and this makes it easier for us to call them via Artnet. So if you just stick to that convention um, and if for instance the current last effect is 053 then you want to start the name of yours with 054 underscore followed by the name. Okay, so let's actually get some of these applied. Um, so a lot of them will do exactly what you would expect. Um, let's have a look for instance, maybe pixelate. Um, so if we bring in pixelate, now you'll notice that um, depending on the effect, we get some different parameters appear. So some effects have one parameter in the case of pixelate, pixelation, um, but then other, param other effects will have many, many more parameters. So let's have a try on some of those other ones. Uh, let's try InfraVision. So again, this one just does a weird kind of uh, color inverting. So depending on what you've got playing, it will change how things work. Now what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to put a piece of moving video on there. So you'll see that new video I've brought in has automatically made use of that InfraVision um, effects that I left on there from last time. Okay, and so I was just using the downward arrow key on my keyboard to move those modules out the way. Um, as we dig in a bit deeper, let's try Tunnel for instance, we'll start to see that we get a few more controls. Like this one for instance has three, we've got speed, we've got detail, and we've got rotation. So some of these are great triggering manually, but then in other situations they might be better sort of automated from a console. So certainly things like the rotation on this would benefit well from some kind of external sequencing. And then as we dive down, let's go to something like RGB Glitch. So this is one I made myself. Um, it can be a little bit confusing, this effect. So let's actually just talk you through what I'm doing here. So there's a probability level. Now what's happening is every frame, um, there is a random number being generated. And whether or not the number falls above or below the probability threshold determines whether that is actually used. So if we put that threshold up to about half, and then we're going to increase the amount of jump that it will do every time that value goes past the half. So you can see now that we're getting this sort of uh, split on our RGB in the corner there. Now the reason it's going very slowly is it's doing zero frames a second. And the way I've made this effect, if you get it to 0 0.3, that should give you 30 frames a second. There we go. So there we go, zero. 0.3. There we go. So you can start to see that jumping around a little bit more in the corner now. Let's just take that down. And then maybe let's just uh, increase some of the values on there. We've got a distortion to give you that sort of bad, dirty TV look. And maybe even a bit of roll as well, just for that really, really glitched out kind of look. So this is a good example of one that has a few more effects on it and is really worth having a bit of a dig on. Um, it's worth remembering as well that the units have a reset button. So if you get yourself really, really lost, you can uh, find your way back at any point. Uh, another favourite of mine is the dot grid. So we can push up the dot size, there we go, and the amount of dots on there. Let's just bring it back down. And I kind of like that. It's sort of almost an LED 
an old school LED screen effect. If you remember the days of having quite large gaps between your pixels on the screen, it gives that kind of feel. And then let's just have one more for good luck, the kaleidoscope. Everyone loves the kaleidoscope. Just take the divisions down on that, like so. And you kind of get the idea. Now, as with anything in AI, we can recall all of these with a scene trigger. So if I press the tab button, it will create my scene trigger like so. And if I go in there, um, I think what I'll do, I'll just disable everything except for my effects. I'm just going to run through there. Run through there and there and there. Brilliant. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change that effect up a bit. Let's maybe put a different effect on there. That's a nice simple one. Three times. So again, I'm going to give that a scene trigger. Let's just check that one out. Looks good to me. And then last but not least, let's have another um, effect in there. I think what we'll have this time is uh, a blur. Nice big blur on there. Just give that loads of blur. So all of these uh, scene triggers can be recalled um, either from the interface or from the console. Like so. And you can see now that jumping back to those will actually bring my presets back as they were at that time. Now the other thing that we can do there, I mentioned that we can have um, effects on the clip. So I'm going to just go back and take that one off my layer, like so. So if you right-click on a clip, um, you'll notice on the left it says Edit as Patch. If you give that one a press, and that will open it up for us. And you see this wrapper here, which allows us to apply effects. So if you press the Configure button, this little preview here is showing us what's going on. I'm going to just bring that open a little bit more. And it's basically the same system. Um, we need to enable the effect first of all. Let's bring that down. Um, let us just do something obvious. Posterize. Maybe the amount of colors. I think we want to take that one down. Something like that. So I'm going to close that. And when I close this final one, it's going to ask if I want to save. And I do want to save so that that effect is applied. And so now we have two instances. We've got this normal instance here. And this one on the left, which should be our affected version like so. So what I sometimes will do, I will have my main unadulterated clip that I can adjust on the fly, but then I'll maybe end up with some duplicates of that clip like we've got here and having specific effects applied to each.